What up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Today, we had a special treat. We are with Pat Hyben from Real Estate Rockstars. And this is actually really cool because it started off as Pat actually interviewing me to talk about the real estate market. And what ended up happening is we just went back and forth and it really just turned into a conversation. I think like both of us are actually interviewing each other. So we talk about expansion. We talk about disruption. We talk about what's going on in the market. Here's the thing. No matter what's going on in the market, some of us are going to be extremely successful and embrace it. And it's going to create a lot of opportunities and others are going to struggle. It's, it's, it's just the way of the way it is anyway. The cool thing, though, is with disruption, figuring out some ways to get in front of what's coming and really able to capitalize on that. The reality is the market's going to change. Without question, the internet is changing real estate. It's changing many industries. That if you're going to close your eyes and bury your head in the sand and pretend it's not coming to real estate, then I feel for you. That said, you want to get on board with some of the changes, I would pay attention to what we're talking about and get out there and start looking and, and getting in front of what is happening with real estate, my friends. Another thing, January 2nd, I'm starting the 24-day challenge, the Advocare 24-day challenge. Some of you did it with me last year. It was awesome. We had people lose anywhere from 17 pounds on the high side to 3 pounds on the low side. But the cool thing about it is it's a 24-day clean eating, cleansing, changing your habits, changing your diet, just starting the year with some right routines and new habits for eating. And what better day to start? So I'd love to do it with you. If you're interested, let me know. Just send me an email, david at davidihill.com. Let me know you're interested. We're going to get a group of people together, but you got to act quick because we're running out of time and we got to order your products and get everybody together. So anyway, that said, 24-day challenge. If you want to check it out, actually go to my website, which is davidihill.com. And just click on affiliates and you can click the Advocare link. Or better yet, go to livealongersmarter.com. Hey, guys, you rock. Enjoy Pat and I talking about real estate in the market and where it's going. All right, Rockstar Nation, I have a great returning guest. I got Mr. David Hill from Boylestown, Massachusetts, about 40 minutes outside of Boston. And David's a returning guest. He was on a while ago. It's been a while, a couple hundred episodes probably. But uh, I was excited to get him back because he's been doing some neat things since he came on last. We're going to talk about expansion, but from the mind of someone who decided to link up with an expansion team and then grow his business that way rather than starting his own expansion team. And then we're going to talk about some of these disruptive companies that you may or may not need to fear, or you may or may not need to join as a, an agent in the coming years. So we're going to dig deep into that, guys. So I'm excited for this call. It's going to be high level and hardcore. So David Hill, welcome back to Real Estate Rockstars. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for having me, Pat. Appreciate it, brother. Hey, why don't you give everybody a little rundown on you so they can get to know you better? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, about 14 years in the business now, um, partnered up. Uh, I've, I've always had one of the top producing between one and five teams in my market for years and years. I was, was actually thinking about relocating my team. I think one of the mistakes I made, and we'll talk about this, was instead of expanding my team, I moved my whole team to a new market, which really set us back. And now here I am two years later, you know, my team closes 90 to about 115 sides a year. And now we ended up moving from the location we expanded to, uh, I'm sorry, we expanded back to my original location, which was <laughs> for mass. So I wish I would have just expanded two years ago to Westboro, but that's not how I had to learn it the hard way. So, so um, wait a minute. All right. So, you started out in, in like 14 years ago in what city? I started off in Worcester, Worcester, Massachusetts. And how far away are you from Worcester now? Uh, well, I, I mean, I've always lived in Worcester. I, I live in a town called Boylston, which is uh, about 10 minutes from Worcester. Um, but my office, is, uh, my second location is in Westboro, which is about 25 minutes uh, east of Worcester, closer to Boston. So it has a much higher price point, which is part of the reason why 
I wanted to expand. But see, the problem was, Pat, I didn't actually expand my team. In 2015 or 2014, I actually took my whole team and I moved it to Westboro thinking, okay, well, you know what? I'll still get my Worcester business, but now I'll be in Westboro so I can actually focus on Westboro and increase my my sure. price point. It, it didn't quite work like that. Well, well, let's talk about that. Why, why wouldn't it work, right? If it, because we all know that the address on a business card is BS because nobody really hands out business cards. And if they do, they don't have a mailing address because nobody writes mail anymore. What, what difference does it make? How did the consumer even know that you moved? Uh, well, for the, the first thing we did was send everybody a postcard, let them know. We moved, <laughs> That's a mistake probably, number one. Right? Yeah, probably wasn't the smartest thing we ever did. <laughs> Um, you know, it's not even so much that that they knew. I think just coming into the market, there were a lot of a lot of other agents in the market that were pretty well established. So it was almost like you know, I I went in there. Think, you know, I think Grant Cardone says it best. He says, you know, the ten x rule is things are going to be ten times harder than you expect. Mm. So I just kind of assumed I'd go in, I'd hit Fizbo's and expireds and break into the market that way and do some creative stuff. And uh, it just really didn't, didn't kick off for me as, as easy as I thought. I mean, two years later, now we're doing pretty good in Westboro. You know, we'll probably do about 75 sides this year in Westboro. But we're just starting to gain traction now. You know what I mean? So I, I personally, like I said, I, I think the mistake was I should have just stayed in Worcester because uh, I, I, I believe not, I lost Worcester business while I was being in, in Westboro because people in Worcester are now like, well, we don't want to work with a Westboro agent. And, and it happens. It's they they ha- are fickle like that. Yeah, they are. I mean, I, I mean, trust me, I've, you know, I've been there. I, I lost a ton of my SOI, if not all of it. Once they found out I was, you know, not in touch or moved out or whatever. But yeah, so I guess the key is to try to keep it secret. You know what I mean? Or, or, or just not let them know, at least have an address. It could be a PO box for all they know. Uh, so it shows up on a Google search, you know, and, Otherwise, they just w- won't even know about it. You know, well, here, it's interesting. So, what do you recommend? Yeah. So, I, you know, here's what we we here. My thinking behind this was okay. The people in Westboro, they're not going to work with the people in Worcester because it's a much higher price point. They don't want their houses connected. And this could this is probably my limiting belief, right? They don't want their houses connected with the lower priced Worcester houses. But then the, the Worcester clientele that I already have, they're like, well, geez, they're not going to care. I mean, wow, we're in Westboro now. So they would probably want their lower priced homes connected with the higher price homes. That was my logic uh, behind the whole thing. Um, like I said, it just it qu- didn't quite work that way. What it did was it took my focus out of Worcester, out of my bread and butter, out of you know where I started my business, my roots put me in a place. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the agents. I didn't know who the players were. Um, it was almost literally like starting over from scratch, building my real estate business. I just didn't expect that, Pat. I think that's the key. If, if I was smart, like I said, going back, um, I could have found somebody in Westboro, and this is where expansion comes in. I would have found somebody that's already established in Westboro that's looking for an opportunity and then built an expansion team around them. Hmm. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And it's essentially kind of where you're at now, like, like looking back now, two years later, right? The 10 X, you, you've gotten your head kicked in 10 times more than you thought it was a lot harder. Are you glad you did it? I'm glad I did it. I mean, I, I wouldn't tell you. I, I That's an interesting question. I learned a lot. Let's put it that way, right? I learned a lot. I know what not to do. So I can certainly tell people in the future what not to do. I'm glad I did it because I'm there now. And we are uh, becoming established. My price point has increased you know, at least 30% since I've moved out there, which has been great, obviously, for, for profit. And now I am established in Westboro. So I'm, I'm in a Westboro office, but now I went and I found somebody in Worcester um, that was doing a good business and I partnered up with her and now she runs my Worcester location. So, yeah. you know, in, in the midst of it, I would tell you, I was, I was not thrilled about Don't it. Don't burn now. the boats. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the lesson there. Don't burn. This is a great conversation because actually in our, in our uh, private group, Big Profit Agents, I just had one of our members uh, ask this exact question about, you know, how, how they should go about moving because it's a higher price, so a significantly higher price range. 20, 25 minutes down the road. Mm. So this is a good conversation. I think at the end of the day, it's like, don't burn the boats, right? Yes, go there. Spend time doing it. 
but don't, uh, you know, be stealth about, you know, yeah, doing it maybe to I, people uh, in your current neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. I probably shouldn't have sent out a postcard letting everybody know we moved to, uh, to Westboro, you know, and, and I literally had people say, Hey, you know, I, I had somebody list a house that, you know, I know that basically said, Hey, I, I knew you're out in Westboro now. So I just, you know, felt that you didn't want to do the business in Holden. And I was like, what? But it happens, man. That's, that's the business. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so let's talk about the expansion team. You joined the Hergen Rother group. Adam's been on the show several times. Uh, hashtag Herg Life. Tell me about that. What, you know, what made you decide to go and join up with an expansion team? And uh, why would you pick uh, Hergen Rother? There's, there's many out there to choose from. So did you have a selection process? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, good questions. Uh, well, I, I went and I took the expansion course with uh, Kristen Cole. My my intention of taking the course was g- to expand. I was going to expand my team that I had going. Uh, this was, uh, what, 2015, end of 2015. And what I realized, uh, Pat, from taking the expansion class uh, was that I just did not have the system or, or the team. The, the, basically, the hub is, is what a expansion is built off. I didn't have that in place. So if, if I would have expanded my, what I had going, it would have been a huge, uh, just a mess, a, a big, big mess. So that was what I learned from taking a class. And then after taking a class, I ended up getting into dialogue with a couple expansion groups. You know, I'm not going to name the other ones, but we were in contact with about three of them in dialogue. And, you know, Adam is here in Vermont, so it's, it's, it's close to me. I know Adam. I've done some events with Adam in the past. And, uh, you know, I just really liked a lot of what they were offering. They, they seemed like they were really supportive. They were kind of in line. Our vision is transforming the real estate experience uh, through communication. And their vision has been transforming the, the, uh, the, the, experience, you know, the homeowner's experience. So I just thought we lined up on a lot of those on the values and stuff like that. And uh, honestly, I, I mean, the, the reason I did it is I went back to the drawing board and I said, okay, am I going to go back now. I've been in this business for, you know, for 12 years. Um, I'm a trainer. I, I have a podcast. I'm a speak. I just do, I do I have a lot of other things going on. Am I going to really go back and build this team, spend another, you know, three to five years to build this team where I can expand it? Or do I want to just partner up with somebody else that already has those systems in place and those tools? So I had a conversation with these guys. I explained what my goals were, my three-year goal and my five-year goal. And after having a conversation with them, I realized that it made more sense to partner with them instead of trying to go back and build that myself. And honestly, for me, Pat, I don't care about my name on signs anymore or any of that stuff. For me, it's about profit. It's about, you know, my family and, and, you know, living the life that I want to live. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. So, okay. So, so tell me a little bit about like what you do, right. And what the expansion model, the, the hub offers you. And what does what kind of life does that allow you to live? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, the hub handles everything. I mean, essentially, I you know what I do right now is I am in charge of really just finding talent. I so I'm I'm in the process of recruiting. That that's what I do on a daily basis. I also still go on listing appointments and list properties. But the hub supports us in everything they do. They support us in in all the listing management. They support us in the social media marketing. Um, they support us in, uh, in, you know, we have graphic artists, we have the, the you know, the, the, they send out the sign guys, the, the photographers, the runners, um, they have a client care manager, um, the transaction coordinator. So essentially, the only thing that I have to focus on, on myself, or we have to focus on, I should say, is my buyer's agent show up and, you know, they go into Boomtown and they follow up on the leads. Um, my listing agents, you know, they grab the packets, you know, they set the appointments, they go out the door. We, we really want to make everything so that they can just focus on the 20%. That's it. Their top 20% uh, priority. And, and then the rest of the time, if, if they do it the right way, it, it, it gives you a lot more uh, freedom with your time. I think the biggest challenge we see with a lot of agents is, uh, is the minutia that they're dealing with on a regular basis. And they don't even realize it. Yeah, it, all the minutia. So the minutia is gone. So that, really, that's it. Yeah. So all you're doing is taking listings and building your team, motivate, or not even building the team. I would just say motivating the team and training the team and recruiting the team. So, yeah, you can say yeah. building the team, but you don't kind of like build the business. You can build a building 
but you're not the scaffolding that holds it together or the maintenance crew that cleans it or the, you know, yeah. electric company that provides electricity to it and all that, right? You're, you're, you are those, it's just those couple of things. And quite frankly, those are the fun things. Well, it's a, that's a good point. I mean, I, I go off and I, I am in, responsible for bringing talent in. The way that these teams work is, is, I'm sure you understand that it's a volume thing, right? The way for these two. So we need to get this thing up to 300 transactions um, as soon as possible. So we'll probably hit 50% of that, you know, going into our first year. But ultimately, the nice thing about this for me is, is I get in these relationships with the agents, I can bring them in, and then we can plug them into a system that they have access to all the training, they have access to, to um, uh, power up calls, they have access to weekly coaching calls to, you know, different coaching programs. So they have so they so her group is supporting us um, in, in just the administrative stuff, but they're also supporting us on getting these agents into production. So that's something else now that I can take off my plate. Although I do meet with, you know, with my team on a weekly basis, my teams. And I also, uh, you know, with my, with my 20, with my leaders, I spend time with them on a regular basis as well. So really, wow, they're taking care of accountability and I'm assuming accountability, accountability and training almost the hub. I would say that you know, the hub is all theirs. Yeah, I have nothing to do with hub. I mean, they do a, a fantastic job with that. Um, the agents, are, it's, my accountability is still my responsibility when it comes to the team and the agents. So, you know, we, I have my leaders. Heather runs my Worcester location. And um, right now, I, I'm honestly, I had somebody that was running my Westboro location. It didn't work out. So now I'm back in the trenches in Westboro, but you know, I, I communicate with Heather and she, it's the hierarchy, I guess, you know, and, um, and that's how it works. So we're in, always in the process of looking for talent. Yeah, that's the key. You know, we had Steve Murray on and, and, and he said, basically the only way that expansion really works is, you know, you know, the success of any expansion team arises and falls with the leaders of the individual locations. Like it rises and falls with David Hill. You know, yeah. you know, Adam could do an incredible job, but if he doesn't get, you know, 20 David Hills out there, you know, it's going to fail. You know what I mean? Or is, does that make sense? Well, yeah. And right now I'm in the process, Pat, of uh, we're talking to two, we're about to launch two additional locations. So my goal is really to, to, to build this thing throughout Massachusetts. And that, that's my goal ultimately to get a hundred agents under me, you know, and then 200 agents under me. Um, and I believe that the platform is there to do that. We can support that. You know, uh, the last time I was on your show, I, you probably don't remember the interview, but we had talked about my challenge in 2014 when um, my team was number one in my MLS. I came back and my whole team quit, right? Everybody said, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're leaving you. And, um, you know, I took responsibility for that, for, my, for that. And I've been working on my leadership skills. And I think... Mm. You know, I think a lot of us, we become really, really good at salespeople, um, but being a salesperson and being a leader are two, two, th two separate things. So really, for me now, it's all about leadership and growing that leadership lid. And that's what I've been focused on for the last couple of years. So, that's awesome. I, I, I'll, you know, I, there's not many people out there that'll be able to take a listing over me if, if we can both, if I can sit down at the table. But, um, I, you know, to me, that's not the important thing anymore. I can teach people how to do that. I, I want to focus on my No, leadership. that's great. It's good that, you, you know, they say, you know, there's some sayings, I don't want to botch it, but, I, you know, basically you don't, you don't know the world till you know yourself, right? You don't, you, you got to know yourself first. It sounds like you're at a, you're at a place of peace where you know yourself and you found a good fit. Absolutely. And I don't want to dig down and uh, normally, you know, on the show, I dig down in all specifics, but if you guys want to hear some specifics, you know, you can go back to when Adam was on the show. It wasn't, it wasn't too long ago. It's episode 530. That's episode 530, hybendigital.com backslash uh, Adam Hergenrother two, I believe two or three, but just go to episode 530 and you'll find it. And uh, listen to that. And he'll give you all the specifics of, of, you know, how his, how his expansion model breaks down and uh, what people like David are doing to, to grow that to, throughout the country. So what I want to talk to you about next, David, is, uh, you know, you have your podcast, you, you know, you wrote a book, you're a face and a uh, spokesperson in the real estate arena. A lot of people know you and uh, you keep a really good pulse on what's going on. You made some comments and, and you've written some things and said some things recently about, 
the influx of of some new concepts with brokerages. You know, it's like um, it's disrupting brokerages. You know, the old adage when Avis came out from you know car rentals, we try harder, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to beat down Hertz or whatever, we try harder. And it seems like we have a lot of brokerages now that are trying harder, right? We try harder. Yeah. We have- you have a lot coming out. People are like, who? I never heard of them before. You have a lot coming out where, you know, the agents are, are, are getting large portions of the commissions. And, and you have a lot that are basically not even licensed to buy, basically, or, or, or focus on, you know, buying the home at a discounted price and then, you know, selling it later or keeping it, renting it out, like, you know, open door and, and stuff like that. So I want to dig deep into that. Why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about this? Tell me a little bit about your concerns, some of your thoughts, where you see this going. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I, I listen to your podcast, Pat, and, uh, you know, I, I, um, I can't remember the episode now. I have, of course, had it written down, but you had interviewed somebody that was talking about one of these models. And I think we're seeing, at least in my market, we're seeing a lot more of these Redfin type companies show up or um, these discount real estate companies. I mean, the reality is disruption is going to, it's, it's coming no matter what one, some way or another. I mean, if you look at the cab industry, right, the hotel industry, um, travel, uh, even retail, everything is being disrupted right now. So I, I don't think that we can, we can pretend that it's not going to affect real estate it some way or another. It's like the, real, the National Association of Realtors or, or the real estate agent, the group, whatever you want to call it, the group of agents out there, and this would be anywhere, really, not even just U.S., right, have somehow stayed together cohesively and not, not allowed it to happen. And a lot of these companies have come in, they've left hooked, right hooked, they're jab, 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 body blow, jab, 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 body blow can't knock the beast down they just can't do it yeah and and there's a lot of people you know trying to get in the game to do that and disrupt it essentially disrupt the you know yeah at the end of the day what they're disrupting not directly but maybe indirectly is the is the commission structure yep right that's what gets disrupted like it or not Uber disrupted the cab industry, but really what they disrupted was, you know, the cost to the consumer. It's like 40% less to get an Uber than a cab, right? Well, yeah, ultimately. And absolutely. I mean, the, the consumer is ultimately going to be the one that's going to disrupt the real estate industry if they do. I mean, because it's going to be up to them. They're going to make the choices in the end, right? And, if, and, and I think what's happening, and this comes back to the expansion conversation, is it's getting a, a lot harder for individual agents to compete with teams or expansion teams because they don't have the resources to compete anymore. So I think personally, my opinion, and you know, I need to listen to your interview with Adam, we see a lot of people, a lot of agents are, are getting to a place where they're going to need to probably be on some type of a team, whether it's a team or an expansion team or some way to actually generate leads and support and things like that where it's getting a lot harder. And that's what I believe, in my opinion, is these companies, you know, with discount real estate, with, um, with fee-for-service, these Redfin-type companies giving money back, rebates, all this stuff is going on. What about Zillow making offers online now uh, direct to the seller? So how well, you long- know, and Redfin came out with something like that just recently, and like maybe even today, called Redfin Now. Mm. You go on to Redfin now, same thing as the Zillow offer or whatever, I think. Uh, maybe you could explain the Zillow offer a little better to me. But the Redfin wow. now is you go and you put your address and they give you an offer what they'll buy it for. Mm. Imagine that, right? Imagine that. Just going direct to the homeowner. The buyer can, so trying essentially to cut out the agents. So exactly. is that going to work? I, I don't know. Is, is it going to kill the industry? Probably not. It's got to be a flush industry of cash, though, because, you know, I, I mean, I can't imagine that this company, that these companies are always going to want to buy real estate, right? Nothing stays that attractive of an asset class forever. You know, everything has ups and downs. This is kind of how I look at it. Masters, I'm going to get you right back to the show. We have a couple really, really cool things going on. If you love podcasts as much as I do, which I'm assuming you do if you're listening here, 
you're going to love audiobooks. And Audible is the largest and best resource for audiobooks out there. If you want to get a free book, just go to davidsfreebook.com. You can get yourself a free download. A couple recommendations. Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson is a fantastic book. Also, John Acuff has a book called Finish which I feel is a a read for everybody. Uh, They're both awesome. They're on Audible. So again, davidsfreebook.com and get yourself a free audiobook from Amazon. It's absolutely amazing. And again, I mean, you're getting a free book. Let's say you you load it, you download it, you you, for whatever reason don't love the service, for whatever reason, then you just cancel and literally the book is free and you even get to keep it. Your credit card's never charged. The other thing is, Gary V, man, absolutely love Gary V. I, I'm, I'm studying Gary V and what he does with social media. He's got an event coming up in Miami on January 24th. It's called Agent 2021. Agent 2021. I will be there. I'd love to get as many real estate agents together and get a little group together. We'll do a mastermind. We'll just, it would be amazing. So if you're interested in that event, go to my site, davidihill.com forward slash agent 2021. Again, davidihill.com forward slash agent 2021. Enjoy the rest of this interview. There were certainly times in our world where you would never buy tech stocks, where you would never buy real estate. Just people weren't buying it for the most part. And in the whole, that whole model is based on, yeah, we'll buy it for this. I, you know, I don't know, but maybe. Well, I, th- I think what's happening is, is there's a lot of companies that are trying to uh, just become the middleman to cut out the list agent or the buyer's agent and just have the seller deal direct with the buyer. And it, you're, I mean, Zillow offers essentially. So what t- it is, tell us right? how that works. I'm not using it, man. So I'm, I'm probably not the best person to tell you exactly how it works. I, I, I Similar heard, probably, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. But you know, that's the thing. I mean, so that is ultimately what's making it harder and harder for agents to compete, right? I mean, if think about our industry, right? You, you said that the, I don't know, whoever's lobbying for us, right? Keeping these guys, how long can they continue to do that? And then you have an industry with over a million members and it's getting harder and harder for real estate agents to make money. And then even if you look, and you've been doing this longer than I have, Pat, obviously you've been doing this twice as long as I have. We, we've seen this come and go, right? I know I have. I was in the business in 2004, oh, yeah, absolutely. 2005. But at, and, and you saw all these companies show up, like help you sell. And uh, I don't know, there were some other ones back Zip then. Realty, yeah, Dave but, Six. and Exactly. You know. but, but they were gone once the market shifted. So is the markets is strange right now. I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are on it, but it's, it's, I mean, how long can this sustain? It's amazing. There's no inventory, anything you list, you're getting multiple offers. Is this, is this time, are these companies going to go away once this market shifts? Probably. I mean, they always tend to cause a lot more attention and then phase out. You know what I mean? They always Mm. tend to be a concern. And I like what you had to say about, you know, agents. I think that, you know, I was talking to an agent today and I'm not going to mention any names and this was not a recorded conversation, but he was saying that his biggest recruitment of how he builds his team is he advertises a really high split. Hmm. So let's say he advertises 95-5 split and he says, hey, any agent that joins me is on a permanent 95-5 split. Everyone's like, man, that's a deal. I'm going there, right? They go there, but then he tells them, look, you know, you know, they go there and they start failing. And he says, why don't you join my team on a 50-50 split? And uh, then they join the team on a 50-50 split. And they never leave the team because, because of what you said. And the reason you joined, you know, Hergenrother is because – you know, agents need that training and they need that accountability and they need that, that hub to balance and to, to help them do the business. And the ones that go off it, which are few and far between, usually fail. So what happens is he knows deep down that him advertising this really, really high split is not really to make money as a brokerage. It's just a way for him to build his team. You know, but he tells them, hey, listen, come on my team and you could always go back to the 95.5 or you could always, once you get going, you can go on your own and very few actually ever go on there. It's a bait and switch. It's like, it's like the damn, it's like the guaranteed buy. It's like, if we don't sell your house, we'll buy it. Then you, whenever anybody comes on my show that has that, I ask them how many they bought and they've said, 
well, we've, we've done 7,000 yeah. listing appointments yeah. and bought two. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. So, so it's interesting, but it goes back to your point, which is, you know, agents need that structure. And that's why the majority of the agents just stay on a 50, 50 split on his team rather than going to what he advertised. Am I making any sense? Absolutely, man. Listen, I started my business on for sale by owners and expireds. Um, I mean, that market right now, you know, everybody's doing. I mean, I don't know if you read Russell Brunson's book, uh, Marketing yeah, I read Secrets. Them. Yeah, when his metaphor, Red Sea, you know, when he talks about Red Sea, Blue Sea. Yeah, remind me. The Red Sea is like, is like the chum, you know, when you're, when you're fishing and you throw all the, the chum in the water and the fish just, uh, you know, flock and attack it. Fizzbowls and Expires has turned into Red Sea. Like everybody's calling them. You call, if you don't call it 8 a.m., but you call it nine, 15 people have called. So that industry's changed. So it hasn't changed. They're still there, um, but it's, it's just a lot more competitive. So what do you do? What do you do about that? Well, there's, uh, what do I do? I teach people to, to, to call first. I, I teach people, uh, we're doing door knocking now, uh, things that haven't done in the past. We're, um, you know, being more purposeful with our conversations, asking better questions, um, you know, calling just multiple times, a lot of things to do. Um, you know, if you, can't, if you can't be first, then you got to be the best, right? Yeah. You know what a lot of people are doing, which I'm, which I'm finding is, is, which has come back and come back furiously is uh, the, the circle prospect and just cold yeah. calling, call it cold calling. Circle I mean, people prospect. are cold calling cell phones, you know, with Vulcan 7 and, and all, all of those things. Yeah. Way more today than well, a even- year ago, way, 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 way more than two years ago. And, and like, you know, it's just. So it, think about it. You know, and they're killing, the, they're getting listings from it. Of course. Like lots of listings, quality listings. Yeah, no, I agree with you hundred percent. So like anything else though, now everybody's jumping on that wagon, right? So now you're circle prospecting neighborhoods and they're like, wow, you're the third person that called my house in a neighborhood. So, so you know, go back to the old expireds three years ago, four years ago, if you were calling old expireds, that was like gold. Nowadays, everybody's, even the old expireds are getting bombarded by calls. So it's, it's, you know, it's what's next. How do we, you know, how do we stay? And that's why I'm, I'm saying um, it's getting more and more difficult for the agent out there to, to make money in this business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, uh, you, I, I think at the end of the day, you just have to hustle more, right? It's just like, you know, when business tightens up, uh, it just requires more hustle. Hustle ahead of time. When, when we went through the short sale issue, you know, when it was 2010, 2009, all that crap was going on. It, it all required all this extra work after you sold it, right? And all that's gone, right? Now it's pretty much streamlined. It's easy to get loans. Everything's fast again. But the work, the amount of work has shifted from the back end to the front end, you know? Absolutely. You know, the other thing too, internet, right? Internet leads. I mean, you know, half people, you know, shun them and say, I would never work, you know, don't want to mess with. But right now the reality is, you know, Zillow works. I mean, as much as we want to, you know, say, I say we, I hate Zillow. I fought Zillow for years and years. I mean, one of my buyer's agents literally just got a, 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 a million dollar buyer lead from Zillow by answering her phone on a Sunday morning and she's under contract at, at a million fifty or something. I mean, from a Zillow lead, you know, and that and that's happening. I, I mean, so, but you know, we're we're also spending twenty seven hundred dollars a month so that we can get those Zillow leads. You know what I mean? And that that's just in one area. So, how do the other agents that are coming into the business compete with that? You know, when you have these budgets of five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month to generate leads, is the solo agent going to be able to compete with that? It just depends, not if they don't have the money, you know, I mean, the only way they can is to, is to get their own listings, you know, I mean, sure. yes, they can compete with that, but they have to have a system where they're getting listings and they're prospecting and they're working hard, right? I mean, there's always agents that are prospecting agents. There's always agents that are referral agents. There's always agents that are, you know, social agents. There's agents that are internet agents. I mean, everybody gets business in different ways, right? And I guess that's just it, you know? Yeah, you can compete with that, but you just have to find your niche and go after it and work harder on the front end. Like you said, like like the 10X rule, everything's 10 times harder. And all the work now is in a seller's market is being, a lot of the work is being done 
before you close the deal rather than after you close the deal, which it was, you know, a while ago. And you have to, you have to have the eyes of, um, I think also have the eyes of a, of a brand new agent. It's like you said, you know, you fought Zillow for years, right? Well, you know, I had a guy on uh, episode 522. His name was Parker Pemberton. So like, let's say I got here. He sold 80 houses his first year and it was all through Zillow, right? So he just said, you know, my niche is going to be Zillow. Yeah. I'm going to just go Zillow crazy. And that was like the, really the only thing he focused on was Zillow. And he just went crazy with the cheese whiz on Zillow. He just was like, well, this is the only way to get business. I'm going to do it. In his mind, he sold 80 houses. Now, there's always these young guys or these new people, guys and gals that come in and, and they don't have those old philosophies like you had of, hey, let's fight. Let's fight. I mean, and we got to figure out ways, obviously, to embrace all this new technology and all these new brokerages that are coming up one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't know. All I know is we, we're coming up a lot more now against um, companies like Redfin and these companies. So we're just looking for ways to, you know, it's all, it comes down to value in the end, right? We have to bring more value uh, than these guys. And if we can show the sellers how we bring more value to the table and how we can net them more money in the end, then they're, they're going to work with us. And, and it really comes down to that. Yeah. And if, and if they don't want that, then they're, they're going to use a discount broker. And, it, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It is what it is because, you know, everybody wants something different, right? I mean, some yeah. people, you know, and I think you're going to see more and more of this with the millennials, to be honest with you. They don't, you know, I don't know if they see the value, you know what I mean, as much as as some other people. They're not as tied. They're, they're more comfortable going online and being like, hmm, well, let me yeah. pick somebody online without ever meeting them and let me – you know, figure out how to work this online. And I'll watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to do this myself and, and save 2%. Well, think about it. Think about how many millennials are now are getting into real estate. And also, you know, think about the, the average, I think, I don't know if my numbers probably aren't the greatest, but I, I heard that the majority of the realtors are now baby boomers, right? So our industry is actually making a big shift. So, you know, technology is going to impact things as well. I just interviewed a, a, a realtor. Uh, the, he calls himself the purple realtor out of, uh, out of um, oh, where was he from? From the Canada. Purple, the purple yeah, the, realtor. The purple realtor, yeah. I heard something about this. Yeah, he, he's a sharp kid. It's his first year in the business. I, I think he's doing about 80 units himself. And um, he just focuses on, same thing, you know, social media, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, he essentially built a big business through social media. And is that just a way to grab your attention? The purple realtor? Yeah. He's got a, he's got a, a purple BMW that he drives around and he wears purple shoes. Um, everything he does is about being purple and he's, he's branded himself through social media as the purple realtor. Yeah. You can check him out on Instagram. He was on Why my not, show. Right? Yeah. He's, not, right? you know, but that's, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's creative. So anyway, the market, the industry is buddy. Time to pick a color, David. Pick a color, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, so what's your thought on all this? You know, I mean, you, what, when it comes to these, these companies and their real estate, what do you, what do you see? Like, what do you see you know, I don't, I, five years from now with real yeah, estate? I think, I think as agents, you just have to keep moving forward. You have to keep, just keep hustling and keep fighting. And, and I would, if there was one thing I would say is I, I don't know what the future holds, but I do know what the future holds for you individually if you don't save. So, you know, it's not all about how much money you make. It's really about how much mm. you save. So as realtors, I think that you, you should be saving and stockpiling as much money and as, you know, as you can and investing as much as you can and just being prudent about that. Uh, I, I think that's the number one thing. And, then, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, all these companies could be, could be gone and everything could change and, and, and the industry will not be disrupted and the commission structure will not be disrupted. It's possible, but I'd rather have you be paranoid that it is possible that it will be disrupted and that it will be more difficult to make, you know, six figures your first year as a real estate agent. And, and it will be much harder to, to kill it like so many of us have in the past and, and be paranoid like that and, and start saving your ass off. You know, that's what yeah. I would say. Absolutely. Well, that's great advice, man. I'd say plan for the worst, right? And hey, yeah. if it doesn't happen, right. then good for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, David. Well, this has been a blast, man. You're welcome back on it any time. I, uh, I had a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, one of the things we do is we offer all of our guests a free gift that we put in a toolbox. And then that toolbox, all of our listeners could go on and get it. I know you want to give away your book to 10 people. What can you give away? And I'm going to announce that in a second, but what can you give away to everybody? So there's no rush. You can just, we can, I can put it in my toolbox and everybody get it. Do you have a form or something you can offer us? That's a great question. Um, you know what? We're in the process now, Pat, of a, a site rebuild. We are, are going to have a tracking form on uh, my website. So we'll give you a really cool tracker so that you can, you know, like Pat said, you talk about money, you need to be able to track. Track your money, uh, track your calls, track how many contacts you make, uh, track your appointments. And then in the end, uh, now you know your numbers and um, you can use that to become more effective. So we'll give everybody a tracking form. Uh, I'm going to have, have my guy uh, put that together. And then as far as my book goes, you know, I, I'm happy to give out 10 books, Pat, for uh, the people who want to um, go to my podcast, which is Path to Mastery. Uh, just go to iTunes, Path to Mastery. If you give me a review... It doesn't even have to be a great review. Just give me a review and uh, subscribe to my show. Send me an email at david at davidihill.com. Let me know that you did that. The first 10 people that do that, I'm going to send you a autographed copy of uh, the Amazon best-selling sales playbook. That's awesome. And guys, if you're driving down the road, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a link to the sales playbook on Amazon, on uh, hybendigital.com backslash David Hill 2, the number 2, hybendigital.com backslash David Hill number 2. And I'm going to put a link to his tracking form that he uses uh, with his company. And uh, everything that we talked about today, I will put links to on hybendigital.com backslash David Hill. David, great having you on boss and uh, best of luck to you. If I'm ever in the Boston area, uh, we'll get together and break some bread, my friend. Yes, sir, man. Looking forward to it. Masters, if you know me, you know health and nutrition is number one. And that's why I'm an advisor for AdvoCare products. Listen, in my opinion, these are the best products on the planet, guys. You get what you're supposed to get, right? I use the products for health. I use the products for energy. I use the products for wellness. So we have all the different lines from Spark, you know, starting your day with a great energy shot all the way to pre-workout. It's whatever your goals are, right? It's whatever your goals are. You can check out the products at www.livelongersmarter.com. That's my website. Or reach out to me. I'd love to have a 30-minute or, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30-minute conversation with you just talking about your health and nutrition goals and what I can do to help you achieve those goals. So again, products, energy line, or wellness line, whether it's joints, you're getting up there in the age, you just want to keep take care of yourself. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, one of the greatest compliments I get is people, uh, you say, wow, I, I, you look amazing. I cannot believe you are the age you are. You know, weight loss. I've helped lots of people, guys, lose weight. Not just lose it, but keep it off with the products and the, the cool thing is i'd say 75 percent of the people who start with our products they continue using our products even after they initially tried them which has been amazing and strength if you're into bodybuilding then hey you know rich fronin okay i don't know if you know who rich fronin is uh he's an advocate for uh for advocare as well so amazing products you can see us we're featured on nascar a uh, professional soccer college basketball college football men's health magazine last month these are the real deal, guys. LiveLongerSmarter.com is the website. Or reach out to me. if you Like I said, if you want to have a personal conversation with me, just send me an email in the subject line. Just put Advocate Products. And I'd love, like I said, schedule a 15 to 30-minute call with you to talk about your health and nutrition goals. Guys, you rock. Live longer, smarter. And as Gary Keller eloquently said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? You rock. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of the Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.